In this video, I'll write a basic test in Foundry. We'll first copy and paste a simple counter contract, and then I'll explain about test setup. We'll write a passing test and a failing test. I'll also go over again how to test a specific file, and again go over this option called dash bvb, and then lastly I'll run a gas report on the test. In this video, I'll be using this contract to write our test. This is a simple counter contract, and you can get this from Solidity by example. I'll copy this code. And then inside my code editor, I'll click on counter.so under source and then paste the code. Save this file. And then next, I'll open the test file counter.t.so. And since this is a default test that came when we initialized the Foundry project, first I'm going to clear all of the code. I'll clear this out. And then I'll also clear this. And let's try compiling the contract. Inside my terminal, I'll type forge build okay the contract compiles so the next step we'll write our test for the counter contract for each of the tests that we're going to execute we want to start with our brand new contract and to do that we'll need to deploy a new contract before we run each of the tests we can do this by declaring a function called setup function set up and this function must be either public or external so i'll make this public and inside here, we can write code that will be executed before each of the tests is executed. For our example, we will want to deploy a new contract. So I'll say counter is equal to new counter. So if we have two tests, before each test, this function setup will be called. It will deploy a new contract, run the first test. And before the second test is executed, it will run the setup again, deploy a new counter contract, and then execute the new test. Let's write our first test. We will first write a passing test. So I'll say function. But before we write the test, let's open the counter contract and see what we want to test. So I'll click on the counter contract and then move it over to the right. On the left, we have our test contract. And on the right, we have our counter contract. So we're going to be writing a passing test. Let's test the inc function. If we call the function inc, the state variable count should increment by one. So I'll say test inc and then name it public. All functions must be either public or external and it must be prefixed with the name test. Here we're testing the increment function so we prefix it with test and then name our test inc. We'll say counter.inc. This should increment the state variable count by one and we can check this by typing assert equal counter.count. When it's first initialized it is equal to zero. We call the function inc, so now it increments by 1, and now it should be equal to 1. Okay, let's run our first test. So I'm going to open my terminal, clear the dogs, and then I'll type forge test. I only want to run the test for the counter contract. If I open my file navigator, under the test folder, there are two contracts, counter.t.so and contract that tests the hello world contract. Here, I only want to execute the test for the counter contract. So what I can do here is dash dash match path test counter dot t dot so and then execute this command. And you can see here that our first test testing passed. Let's double check this test. If we change this test to two, then the function should fail. Hit control S to save the test file, open the terminal and then run the test again and you can see that the test failed. So it looks like we are writing the correct test. Let's fix our test. And then next, let's write a failing test. What I mean by a failing test is that we want to test for errors. If we call some function inside the counter contract and it throws an error, it should be captured inside this test. So say function test. To test for failures, we'll have to say test fail. And what are we going to test? Let's test the function dec. The state variable count is initialized to zero. So if we call the dec before we call any of the functions, count will be equal to zero. Zero minus one will cause an underflow. So calling the dec function will throw an error. We're testing this here. Test fail dec public. And again, after the test inc is executed, the function setup will be called again. So when this test fail dec is executed, we'll have a brand new counter contract. So this means that the count state variable will be equal to zero. Inside here, count will be zero. And when we call the function dec, this will cause an underflow. And here we want to test that call to dec will fail with an underflow. And to do that, we'll type counter.dec. 
Open the terminal again, clear the logs, and then let's run the test again. And now we have two passing tests. What happens if I change this to counter.inc? Incrementing the count from 0 to 1 will not fail, but here we're saying that we expect this function to fail, but it will not. So this means that this test must fail. To show you this, I'll run the test again. And you can see here that test fail deck fail. This is because Foundry expected this test to fail, but it did not fail, it succeeded. I'll fix the test, and next I'll show you another way to write a failing test. When we call the function deck, it resulted in an underflow error. And inside here we can be specific that we expect that the error to be an underflow error. To do that, I'll say function, I'll name this deck underflow public, and inside here we're going to call counter.deck again. This function will throw an error with an underflow. And to tell Foundry that we expect error to be an underflow, we'll write bm.expect rebird. And inside here, we'll write the error that we're expecting. This will be std error.arithmetic error. This code over here is testing the same thing as test fail deck, except we're being more explicit about the type of error that we expect to receive. We expect that this function call to deck fails with an underflow. So open the terminal, clear the logs, and then let's run the test again. And now we have three passing tests. Okay, for the last example, let's test the deck function. And to do that, we'll first need to call increment several times. So say function test deck public. And then we'll first call the counter inc several times to increase the count. Counter.inc, I'll call it twice. And then we'll call deck counter.deck. And what do we expect the count state variable to be at this point? Assert equal counter.count. We increment it twice and then decrement it once, so we expect the count to be equal to 1. Open the terminal again, run the test, and now we have four passing tests. Next, I'm going to go over the verbosity of the test. Remember that when we executed the test, we had an option called dash bbb. What does this do and why is it useful? Well, going back to our test, let's make the test fail. For example, over here, I'll change this to a 10. And then run the test again. Notice that it says that the test failed for test deck, but we don't know why it failed. How can we get more details out of this test? What we can do is put in the option dash bbb, and then we'll get more details on why the test failed. If I scroll up, I can see here why the test failed. On the left side of the assert equals, it got a 1, but on the right side, we expect it to be 10. And if you want even more details, what you can do is add another v, and it will give you even more details. This b option, you can put up to 5 b's. For details on what each of these b do, I can type dash dash, help and under the option for verbosity it lists how each of the v's will output details for the test i'll go back to the test and then fix it next i want to talk about the gas report option we'll execute the test again and this time we'll put in the option called dash dash gas report this will print out a gas report of the test execute the code again you can see here that four of our tests passed and under it we have a gas report for example, the function to deck on average used 1,758 gas, and it called three times. And the function to ink on average used 15,044 gas. The maximum was 22,344, and it called the function ink three times. So in this video, we wrote a simple test for the counter contract. I showed you how to write some setup code, and how to write tests that pass, and how to write tests where we expect the function call to fail. I talked about how to execute a specific test file, how to output details from the test, and then gas report from the test.